I now call on Miss Rachel Blue Boyu for our legislative report. I think all of you know now that tomorrow, regrettably, is Miss Boyu's last day with the board and the department. Um, Rachel has been our legislative director for four years and she has decided to kickstart her old law firm and to continue education law and advocacy work. Ms. Boyu, I know you have put in countless hours. I mean, uh, and, and I know firsthand because we have many conversations on at night and on the weekends and that sort of thing. And uh, you put these hours in, not just when the legis legislature is in session, but between sessions on behalf of the board and the department and our public schools. Your dedication, your quick response, and your astute manner in dealing with and assessing issues has been valuable work for which there is no adequate way to say thanks. Uh, please present your last legislative report to us. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman Kobe, for your very kind words. Uh, so we have today the 2017 State Board of Education Legislative Agenda. We have worked very hard on this agenda. It is big, it is bold, I'm very proud of the State Board and everyone who made this legislative agenda and all of our legislative priorities possible. That includes most everyone in this room, whether seated at the State Board table or uh, behind me. So, as you know, this legislative agenda has had some friendly amendments of late. We have incorporated our State Board of Education resolutions, whether that is a resolution on school calendar flexibility, whether it is a resolution on the compulsory age attendance, whether it is the State Board's resolution on the whole school, whole community, whole child model. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. They are aligned, of course, with our biennial budget expansion requests and uh, this is this is going to look very familiar to you one uh, other item that was uh, added you'll see at the very bottom on uh, under section six supporting full results criminal background checks to require and fund fingerprint background checks for teacher licensure applicants. You recall Senate Bill 867 of last year, and we know that this is an important legislative task that we have already been working on for these past months in any event. Questions or comments? Just, sorry, I, I do have one. <coughs> still trying to put this together. For example, on whole school, uh, whole community, whole child. Uh, yesterday we had some comments regarding continuing resources needed around, particularly around mental health. And um, I, 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 this is, this really is our priorities. This is not a bill. Correct. Uh, and so uh, I, I understand that, but I do think that it's, uh, worth noting that there are some places in here where we perhaps have not uh, fully articulated the uh, resources necessary and the expansion budget process that we did some time back. And uh, we, we uh, as this moves forward with bills and legislation, uh, there's, there are also some others in here that are associated with expansion items, uh, even for the department for which we don't know yet. <laughs> Uh, what uh, what what those might be so but it, it's it's a, a good list of priorities. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think that um, this is more of the guidelines than a specific agenda, and I just want I think you know that, and everybody else knows that. Um, this gives us an idea of how to react to certain bills or how to help promote certain bills. I know, for example, at least one bill has already been introduced to correct the uh, class size issue, which I uh, 
had favorable hearing, favorable from the district that they perhaps worked. So, I mean, that's an example of one of our issues with a specific bill, and I think that this can be a working document when we plug that in. That being said, one of the things that really concerns me is the compulsory school age item. I think we all made clear when we passed that resolution that there were a lot of qualifications with respect to that. Just raising the compulsory school age 18 doesn't address the problem of the students that, are, that would otherwise be dropping out. And I think it need, needs to be made very clear that that's just not what we're asking. We're asking for a comprehensive approach regarding that. I think the resolution speaks to that, so perhaps you can get some of that information. Uh, if I could comment on that. Uh, uh, we met uh, we meaning uh, Dr. Petrie, Martin, and I, and a couple others, with some citizens that have been taking leadership on this, uh, that took leadership on the pilot program up in uh, Newton Conover and Hickory. And uh, it, it was clear in that meeting what you just said, Mr. Collins, there's a lot of complexities around here. But uh, we also think, uh, think that the whole student uh, North Carolina committee should try to address this as part of their agenda. So uh, I think Dr. Petrie Martin is going to be talking with you about that. Well, good. That committee will come back with some more specific recommendations. For <coughs> one, one other item that was brought to my attention back in um, when we were in Appalachian State, when I <clears throat> kind of made an offhand request to Carolyn Guthrie regarding Read to Achieve, and uh, thankfully she provided us some <coughs> data this morning. Uh, one of the things that we have uh, with respect to Read to Achieve is that we have a number of students who are not passing in third grade who go along and transition, and there's a number of students that uh, are not, even in fifth grade, being proficient. And that number, unfortunately, is getting larger. And I think that um, we need to craft something with respect to read to achieve support past third grade. And I think that should be one of our real priorities to try to advocate because I think read to achieve is one of the hallmark programs of the legislature. And the data that, that I'm seeing um, is a serious creates a serious problem with respect to that that we need to address. And, uh, and we can spend a lot more time on issue session get diving into it, but I'd like to see something in the framework. Uh, yes, Ms. Will. Well, related to that, you know, I'm going to put my plug in. We mentioned, um, as, and I applaud, thank you, first of all, for your work for the last several years with us on um, our legislative um, agenda and work with the legislators. Uh, when we talked about the pre K and early childhood, um, needs and the increase for slots, we talked about providing the data to the legislators to show the direct correlation between at-risk four-year-old intervention and third grade reading scores. And I think that's related, that was my segue to get my other pre-K comment in, but um, I think that it's really important that we connect those dots and that, you know, and I, I know, Rachel, that you always are good at connecting all the dots with this, but as you exit, all of it, it's incumbent upon all of us to help connect these dots for everyone who looks at this. None of these are standalone, but certainly, you know, the work that Mr. Alcorn's involved in in Vernon County is just fabulous and will make a difference there in, in third grade reading scores. We have that data. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, you know, when we talk about raising the compulsory age, I applaud your comments, Mr. Chief, Vice Chair, and it's related to things like the cooperative and innovative high schools. If we want to engage students, we need not look past what happens with those schools. You know, I, when we recognize the graduation rates recently, I can't remember what the percentage was, but I'm going to guess it was 95% of the 100% passing rate were in those high schools that are cooperative and innovative high schools. You know, they're engaging our students in a different way, and that's, I think, Mr. Collins, what you're saying is it's not just about age, it's about engagement. Um, and, and further, the whole child North Carolina model, certainly when we look at number four, dealing with nurses and child and family support teams, 
and you look at 3A with you know walls and clothing consistent with wraparound services, those things are huge, important, and related directly to what we heard yesterday from Dr. Essig, Dr. Harvey, Yates, in a very personal manner. So I just, you know, I think this is a great start that we really got to make those connections. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I, um, those comments were great comments, but I think at some point in time we got to have the sort of consensus of moving forward and um, are, are you all saying we can move forward oh, yeah. without adjustments? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's, he said having this guideline. Yeah, right, right. Working, working right. documents. Oh, yeah. So um, I guess we could have a formal vote, vote but if, if there is no objection, then we can take the word draft out of this document. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Without objection. We'll the, the only thing is, I think that uh, Ms. Bell, you will probably take some of the comments that we made, and you may tweak some of the language a little bit with respect to those issues. And, it's, and it's, certainly, I would like something added with respect to this read to achieve additional support um, that doesn't appear to be specifically on there. And, and, and of course. Ms. Willoughby wants every every section in here to have something to And Mr. Mr. Alper wants a, a, a return on investment on everything. Okay. Ms. Willoughby, well, can you tweak this document a little bit and we'll trust her to do it, right? Yeah. Well, I, I just, all of us, and I mean everybody here understands this, uh, sometimes we won't know what it is until we read the bill. Right. And if a legislator has a real passion for something that's on here and he or she introduces the bill then we we have to be able so we're not going to be able to to we're not drafting bills this morning yeah. so, thank goodness yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. yes uh, dr oxen thank you chairman Covey. uh before we take the word draft off this sheet of paper one thing that i would like for us to address as you take down notes is with regard to the resolution on um, increasing the compulsory attendance age what I would like to see added to your notes is something about further study of this issue around raising the graduate the age for graduating from high school because I think the study that was done was on a very small district I can't recall the name of the district but I would like a study to look at our more complex districts that have just a, a kind of generational array of at-risk factors that oftentimes get in the way of kids graduating from school. You're going to have that go to the whole child committee, uh, that issue, right? Uh, the issue of dropout. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. Think that's what she was talking yes. about. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, right. that's, it's going there, so. That's that, a good point. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. And I look forward to working with you in new and different ways. Well, thank you. <laughs> we look forward to working with you in different ways. That's true. And we, we wish you all the best. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, a true pleasure. And uh, we hope everything goes great with your new challenge. And I know we will hear great things about you. As, you take on these new challenges. Thank uh, you. Let's give her.